morning San Antonio starts right now. The search underway for a suspect on the city's west side after a man was shot three times. We have the latest details and the latest information from police. Protesters continue to hit the streets here in San Antonio. We're going to have the latest. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 75 degrees to start your Sunday morning. It is going to get hot, hot, hot today. And throughout the week, we are going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. 6 o'clock this Sunday morning, June 7th. Good morning. Hope you enjoyed the sunshine yesterday. I'm going to say <laughs> it, and my producers, yes. they're going to be in my ear, they're going to say, why would you say that? It's going to be a great day. It is. Yesterday <laughs> was not? a great day. <laughs> I don't know if I got tan I or burnt. I admire your optimism. A lot of optimism. She just said in my ear, boo. boo. I admire <laughs> it. But we're all wearing red. We didn't even plan it today. You are very optimistic this morning. <laughs> all I have to say is I'm happy for you, but for the rest of us, we're going to be toasty in the afternoons sure. over the next few days. Right now outside, it is a muggy start to the day. It's 75 degrees outside at San Antonio International Airport. In the 60s, up toward Comfort, Kerrville, Bandera, Bernie Stage Airfield. It's already 77 in New Braunfels. We are starting off warm and we're going to end up hot by the end of the day. Here's a quick check of the forecast. Around noon, we'll be at 90 degrees. Around the afternoon, 96 with a heat index near 100. Northeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. I don't know about you guys, but some of my plants are not enjoying the heat. So coming up, I'm going to have a gardening forecast for you over the next few days when you should water uh, and what our rain chances are in the week ahead. Of course, we're talking about scorching temps too. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, police looking for a suspect who allegedly shot a man three times on the city's west side. Police tell us this all happened around 1130 last night at the intersection of Enid Street and South Acne Road. Uh, that's between West Commerce and 151. Officers on the scene telling us that a man in his early 50s was walking home. That's when he was approached by the suspect. After an argument ensued, that man allegedly pulled the gun, shot the victim three times, once in the shoulder, twice in the abdomen. Police telling us that victim managed to somehow get away, ran home, called for help. He was taken to University Hospital in serious but stable condition. The suspect, believed to be a man in his 30s, able to run off, and he is still at large. Metro Health's COVID-19 surveillance dashboard showing a big spike for Bear County. There are now 3,290 confirmed cases, 147 of those being new yesterday. No new additional deaths were reported. That number stands at 78. More concerning numbers coming from those hospitalized locally. 205 patients are in the ICU this morning. 88 of them are on ventilators. From the 147 new cases, seven are jail inmates with a total of 410 cases. No new cases from jail staff. That number remains at 60. 344 cases are from congregate settings, which means there are no cases reported since yesterday and 135 cases are under investigation. That brings the total up to 251. Here at home, it is calm and quiet downtown right now, but hundreds of people gathered peacefully outside public safety headquarters yesterday, marking the start of the second week of protests, all in honor of George Floyd. The night team's Dylan Collier has more on the rapidly organizing plan to increase police accountability here in San Antonio. Before they walked through downtown streets, around 300 demonstrators observed a moment of silence for 8 minutes 46 seconds, the same amount of time a now fired Minneapolis police officer is accused of kneeling on George Floyd's neck. San Antonio city officials announced they lifted a curfew in the central business district just as protest leaders encouraged everyone to not let anything take away from their message. I'm making sure that they on TV right now know that we are not here to create violence. This is what democracy looks like. After the energetic crowd traveled past City Hall and the Justice Center, it regrouped at public safety headquarters. Several speakers talked about the need to defund the San Antonio Police Department, listing specific dates coming up when they can be heard by city leaders, leaders that protesters continue to learn more and more about. You know how to give the names, so when you address them, you already know. That protest wrapped up about 6 p.m. It was followed by another protest, a smaller gathering here at Travis Park that lasted until after 10 p.m. Those budget sessions will take place beginning in August and run through early September. Reporting at Travis Park, Dylan Collier, 
For Good Morning San Antonio. Some business owners along Broadway and Houston are taking extra safety measures following last Saturday's acts of vandalism. Several groups could be seen walking in the area yesterday. One group that calls themselves the Old Ragged first reached out to businesses and offered their service. The group says they were one of the first Texas militia groups, but their priority is to keep people and property safe. We are a visual deterrent first and utmost. When you see us and you want to come over here and break into this business, you've got some issues. Some, you're not in your right mind if you want to come over here and destroy what this lady's worked for. Another group says they will come back as needed. They also say that they are working with the San Antonio Police Department and that they'll notify them first if they see any problems. George Floyd's family gathered for a private memorial service for him in North Carolina. They met yesterday at a rural church just outside his birthplace of Fayetteville. Now, the intimate service followed a public viewing. This all comes as thousands of people assembled in cities across the United States, as we showed you, for protests over George Floyd's death. Police say about 6,000 demonstrators gathered near the Lincoln Memorial and the White House yesterday afternoon. George Floyd's funeral set to happen this coming Tuesday and set for Houston. In your morning headlines, George Floyd's brother, Philanese Floyd, will testify before Congress on Wednesday. He will be speaking before a House Judiciary Committee hearing on policing practices and law enforcement accountability. A source tells CNN it isn't known yet whether Philanese Floyd will be testifying in person or virtually. The brother says he spoke with President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden last week. He says the president did not give him a chance to speak and that Joe Biden has been in constant communication with him. And on the other side, two top military officials we're hearing are refusing to testify before Congress next week. In fact, the House Armed Services Committee planning to hold a hearing about the use of the military during these demonstrations. Representatives do want to hear from Defense Secretary Mark Esper and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Reports show a Democratic House aide says the two are refusing to testify, but the Pentagon disagreeing with that report. They say that the House Committee and the Department of Defense still in talks about who will attend. House Democrats plan to introduce a policing reform bill tomorrow. Speaker Nancy Pelosi says it will come from the Congressional Black Caucus. The legislation comes amid protests over the death of George Floyd. The legislation seeks to address racial profiling, excessive use of force, and qualified immunity for police officers. The bill also will try to improve trust between police departments and communities. The summary of the legislation shows the bill contains anti-lynching provisions and would create a national police misconduct registry. Time now, 6.08, 75 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, he's the valedictorian at Fox Tech High School, and he's involved in so many activities. You'll be surprised how busy he is, and he gets on top of his studies as well. We're gonna introduce you coming up to Eduardo Romas. That's soccer and cross country? Yes, yeah, soccer, wow. cross country, uh, archery. Oh. <laughs> the mariachi group. <laughs> okay, well, did you watch Sesame Street growing up? Of course. Everyone did. Big Bird, the man. Sesame Street, though, now touching on the moment that the country is living through. Next on GMSA, more details about the Sesame Street Town Hall. Wait, oh. Elmo or Big Bird? Big Bird. Well, between them? No, yeah. I'm going to go with the count. Oh, <laughs> good call. Love, love that guy. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam. It is 75 degrees right now. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. We're always doing stories on how to talk to your kids about important things that are happening on around the world. CNN now partnering with Sesame Street for a special town hall talking about racism, giving both kids and parents an opportunity to learn about the current movement and the current moment the country is going through, trying to understand how these issues affect people. Coming together, standing up to racism, touch topics from how to fight racism when you see it and who to call when police officers are being unsafe. Yesterday's hour-long program featured Sesame Street characters like Elmo, Abby Cadabby, and Rosita. Together, along with those experts, they answered questions submitted by families. The event moderated by CNN political commentator Van Jones, anchor and national correspondent Erica Hill, and, of course, Big Bird. I'm so sorry 
they didn't have the count in there for oh, you. Oh, that's okay. But you know, uh, seriously, these the programs look mm. like a lot of fun, but I'm sure they're very effective. Absolutely. When we, you know, when we watch something at home with my little one, uh, there's a message there, and then we get to talk about it afterwards. So very, very helpful. There's Absolutely. also a lot of great children's books yes. that, that help to explain the uh, very important and very large topic of systemic racism. So make sure to look those up too if you're looking for a way to teach your kids about it. But before the break, I did talk about a gardening forecast for us. Uh, and it, basically, you're just going to want to water every day or at least as much as those plants need it because we are not going to see a significant chance for rain over the next seven days. So while it'll be nice and sunny outdoors, it's going to be dry, so you do need to water every single day of this upcoming week, including today. 75 degrees outside as we're starting to see the first light of the day there, but the thing that screams out to me is the humidity at nearly 80%. So today, once again, is going to be a hot and humid day. Pretty much a copy and paste forecast from yesterday, but even a little bit warmer outside by a few degrees. It's 75 in Del Rio right now. Wake up temperature in Uvalde is 71, 75 in San Antonio, 77 at Carrizo Springs and 75 in Catula. Up in the hill country, a touch cooler in the 60s, but still the mugginess is definitely noticeable out there. And in the future cast, we're not gonna see much in the way of cloud cover or rain today. Really not a significant chance for rain at all. And even in the skies, just a few wispy cirrus clouds out there and high temperatures are going to be just a bit warmer than yesterday. Yesterday we got up to 93 degrees today. I think we'll get up to 96 around downtown San Antonio and just about everywhere you look likely to be in the mid to upper 90s for the high temperatures today. But because of the humidity, it should feel a little bit more like 100 degrees outside. In spite of the fact that we'll have a northeast breeze at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, we're still going to see some high humidity. And again, we'll already be at 90 by noon. So the best times to get outside in the morning and in the late evening after the sun has set. Our weather pattern is very interesting. We're kind of actually seeing a battle between a high pressure system and tropical storm Cristobal. Now today the high pressure system is going to win out over San Antonio. We're going to see sunny skies, but Cristobal is going to make a run for this high and it's actually going to allow for very heavy rain from places along the Louisiana coastline all the way over to Florida. You can see that rain right now. We are going to be unaffected directly. We will not be affected directly by Cristobal. Currently seeing gusts of up to 60 miles per hour, and it is expected to make landfall along the central and eastern Louisiana coast later on today. But again, this is a look at rainfall from a potential rainfall from Cristobal all the way up to the western Mississippi River states. So it's going to be an interesting system with potential for a lot of flooding for a good portion of the U.S., but we're going to be on the west side of that storm. And anytime we're on the west side of a tropical system, that usually means dry and hot weather for us. And that's exactly what's going to happen over the next few days. We'll be looking at temperatures uh, near 100 degrees on Monday, 103 on Tuesday, potentially our first 100 degree day of the year on Monday. These are going to be the hottest days we've seen so far. So yes, even though we're San Antonians, we're used to the heat. We're not quite used to it yet this year. So keep that in mind. Coming up, I'm going to have a look at heat safety uh, during this time of year. Uh, and of course, we have very little chances for rain over the next few days. In fact, I didn't even put any chance for rain on the forecast there. Max, Stephanie? I know, it looks much different than the last couple of weeks. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 616, 75 degrees out. And many families impacted by cancer, but today we're focusing on the survivors. It's National Cancer Survivors Day. And next on GMSA, we are talking Fox Tech High School, great graduate, and the plans he has for after graduation. Whew. I'm excited. Yeah, we get to meet Eduardo Ramos. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. As we all know, it has been a very different school year, especially for graduating seniors all across this country. All this comes after schools shut down in March, but here at KSAT, we are not forgetting our seniors. We are shining a spotlight on those 2020 seniors through our great graduate series. In this piece, we're going to introduce you to Eduardo Ramos. Now, Ramos is a valedictorian at Fox Tech High School, and he tells us he's looking forward to a career in neuroscience. 
I plan to attend a medical school outside of Texas. Eduardo Ramos is already talking about medical school, but for now, he's heading to the University of Texas at Austin to study neuroscience. He says he's always been passionate about robotics and the medical field, but when he took biology at Fox Tech, he says that's when he decided he wanted to be a neurosurgeon. I took the class and I, I loved it. And one of the parts I loved the most was the nervous system. They, they teach us how it worked and it was, it was honestly pretty cool. Eduardo is a valedictorian of his graduating class. He was in the academic decathlon, NHS, Posa, the mariachi class, and he's been busy with sports. I've been in cross country, I've been in track, I've been in archery, I've been in soccer. Doing all those activities really made my high school experience fun. Eduardo also had the opportunity to be on the soccer team with his younger brother, Eric Ramos. I had time to bond with a lot of underclassmen and I got to play with my brother in the team, so it was pretty cool. I am definitely proud of him even though he's going to UT. Jose Castro coaches cross country and track. He says Eduardo is definitely competitive on and off the field. So he's probably one of the best students that I've had. Very competitive. He constantly aims for not only perfection, but like giving 110% at everything that he does. And so that was his teacher, Jose Castro, talking about his the student, Eduardo Ramos. And what's funny, uh, when Jose is talking about Eduardo, he's like, I'm still proud of him, even though he's going to UT. I don't know if you noticed, <laughs> there is a big A&M flag behind <laughs> Jose Castro, but of course, everybody is very proud of him. And, and he is, uh, of course, very, very talented and uh, very busy with sports. And in addition to all his sports, he would just get up at 630 in the morning and just go running along the River Walk, which is right close to Fox Tech High School. So way to go and congratulations. Congratulations. 24 hours in the day. He's using all of them. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Time now, 622, 75 degrees out. Today we celebrate cancer survivors because it is the 33rd annual National Survivors Day. That's coming up next on GMSA. But first, we are taking a look at birthdays this morning. First up, William, 50 years old. Happy birthday, William. Happy birthday, William. And this is Mila, two years old. How cute, happy birthday. Keep sending in your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. And remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. And welcome back at 626 K-pop. The group BTS, they're donating $1 million to Black Lives Matter. Earlier this week, the Korean music stars tweeted their support for the movement. They wrote that they oppose racism and believe everyone deserves respect. Variety reports the group and its music label are backing up those words with a donation. And today, a very special day around the country, the 33rd annual National Cancer Survivors Day. The foundation that organizes it says it's a chance to celebrate those who have beaten the, the disease. It's also an opportunity to provide support and inspiration for those still struggling with it. The day falls on the first Sunday of June each and every year. So powerful. Yes, there's always a, a good turnout for that as well. You know, it's a lot. It's very emotional. A lot of stories, and um, you know, a lot of families impacted by the disease. The disease, excuse me. Absolutely. 627, 75 degrees out. If you donate blood at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, you can get a free COVID-19 antibody test. We're going to have the details just ahead. And we are also talking about the latest details of protests around the country. Some remaining peaceful, while others actually ended with officers being injured. That's next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is 6.30 this morning, June 7th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, it was nice and hot. <laughs> Did you yesterday. make it outside yesterday? We did. So we took advantage of the inflatable pool for my little girl. Nice. <laughs> but I'm such a wimp. We, uh, Luis was nice enough to put a, a shade over it. Oh, Luis' yes. husband made your yes. own cabana. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> well, so, that's actually smart. It is, it is very not... smart, and Luis is very handy. I yes. will yeah. say, you guys will be proud of me. I put on suntan lotion yesterday, just not enough. Suntan or sunscreen? <clears throat> suntan. Mad! Oh, <laughs> that's going to make you crispy. It's a, it's a work in progress. <laughs> okay, get sunscreen. SPF 30 or more. Yeah. 
Yeah. There you go. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at temperatures out there this morning. We are starting off on the warm side. We've got 75 in San Antonio, and we've got uh, the upper 70s out toward Del Rio as well. Uh, but temperatures are going to soar even more, a little bit warmer than yesterday for our highs. We'll be looking at our highs closer to the upper 90s today with a heat index making it feel like it's going to be close to 100 degrees. Now, I want to show you the UV index for today. UV index is going to be extreme, which means that during the peak heating of the day, if you don't have sunscreen, Max, <laughs> you could see skin damage time within less than 10 minutes. So make sure if you use sunscreen, everybody can use a little sunscreen. It helps uh, prevent any kind of skin damage there. Uh, and then looking ahead, it's going to get hot. By noon, we'll already be in the 90s. In the afternoon, we'll reach a high in the upper 90s, 96. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now coming up, I'm going to have a, a look at heat safety. I know we're used to the heat in San Antonio, but there's some interesting things that maybe you may not have known before. I'll have the heat safety as well as even hotter forecast than this coming up. Max. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, we now know the name of the woman who died after the fiery rollover crash on I-10 from Friday. The medical examiner's office identi identifying her as 32-year-old Rosemary Pena. The crash happening Friday between La Cantera and Camp Bulls Road. San Antonio police telling us Pena traveling westbound when she hit the center concrete divider. Her car flipped over, caught on fire. She was ejected from the vehicle, pronounced dead on the scene. This morning, we know the identity of a man who was found shot in the head on the city's west side earlier this week. The medical examiner identified him as 38-year-old Telly Coleman. Coleman was found on Henry Street, not far from North Elmendorf and North Zvarzamora Street. It is unclear if the man was shot there or at another location. No arrests have been made. While protests remain peaceful for the most part here in San Antonio, the same cannot be said around the country. Overnight, police clashing with protesters in Portland and Seattle, ending with several police officers injured. At least two were taken to the hospital with injuries, and earlier on Saturday, massive crowds coming together to demand racial equality and police reform. ABC's Ty Hernandez has more. No peace. No justice. No peace. A loud cry heard coast to coast on Saturday. In San Francisco, thousands marched across the Golden Gate Bridge, stopping traffic. In New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Seattle, and so many cities in between. Calls for change in hopes of ending police brutality and racial injustice. That strong message just steps away from the White House. Protesters marching over a new mural ordered by the D.C. mayor, but adding to it a message of their own. The more people that are here means the more people that realize this affects everybody. Many hoping this is a learning lesson for the next generation. This is part of history and they need to learn that History takes hard work. Saturday afternoon, friends, family, and complete strangers gathered in this church in the small town of Rayford, North Carolina, to mourn the tragedy that helped propel this moment. Not only did we lose a family member, but y'all watched as well. I'm praying for us all, and I hope we all get better. A memorial for George Floyd in his birthplace, nearly two weeks after he died in police custody. Former police officer Derek Chauvin charged in his death. I feel so sad because it very well could have been my brother, my son, my uncle, any of those. I saw my people. I, you know, he's, he's one of us. The Floyd family finding solace in the belief that his life served a higher purpose. I feel like God chose him for a reason, that he had selected my brother because he had worked for him. Absolutely. He, you know, he had a job for him and he called him home and so he felt that his death is not in vain. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Three people have been arrested for looting, burglarizing and damaging property at a Target in Austin. That's according to the FBI, who says the three are known members of the anti-government group Antifa. The crimes happened back on May 31st at the Target on North I-35 in Capitol Plaza. 27-year-old Lisa Hogan, 22-year-old Samuel Miller and 23-year-old Sky Elder, all from Austin, 
are facing charges ranging from riot and burglary of a building to criminal mischief. FBI officials say the trio was part of a group of about 20 people. They say one of those people from the group also encouraged others to join by Facebook Live. And if you or someone you know is marched or participated in the protest, the CDC now recommending you get tested for COVID-19. More specifically, they recommend getting tested within three to seven days of those protests that you participated in. The CDC director also pointing out that the use of tear gas by police could actually help the virus spread because it makes people cough. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center providing free COVID-19 antibody testing for all blood donors this summer. The center will start giving out the test tomorrow and it will last until August 31st. Those who receive the test can expect the results in the mail within 14 days after donating. Qualtech's labs will perform the test. The antibody test can show if donors have been exposed to the COVID-19 virus. Our series of leading essay is back every weekend. We're going to be bringing you local leaders in a live interview to talk about the issues that matter to you and our community. It airs every Sunday in the 8 a.m. hour of GMSA. Today, we are expected to speak with San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg in a live interview. We're going to be discussing the latest in regards to the protests and how they're working with organizers to make meaningful changes. Then at 830, set to talk about the economic plan for the city of San Antonio as we go forward. And we want you to participate in these interviews every Sunday. All you have to do is send us the questions you want us to ask. You just have to visit our website at kset.com under the local news tab, or you can type in leading essay in that search bar. Time now, 6.38, 75 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA, CNN's Jeremy Roth gives us some feel-good stories that you're not going to want to miss. Plus, next on GMSA, the Black Lives Matter slogan painted on 16th Street in Washington, D.C. Images that can now be seen from outer space. And taking a look outside with live cam, 75 degrees for now. There's going to be another warm one. And we're going to talk to Sarah just about heat and humidity, looks like. That's coming up after the break. Good morning, happy Sunday, and welcome back. The Black Lives Matter slogan painted on 16th Street in Washington, D.C. So big, you can actually see it from space. Yeah, you should see this video. D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser had it painted in yellow on the street that leads to the White House, and this was on Friday. The mayor did it to honor peaceful protesters and to reinforce the message that Black Lives Matter. New satellite images from Planet Labs clearly show the bright yellow message all the way up there. It, it almost looks like it's, uh, what is it, superimposed in there, but yes, yeah. you can see it clearly. Amazing. And San Antonio will soon have a new drive-in movie venue, the drive-in at Fiesta Texas from the Rooftop Cinema Club opening here in San Antonio. On Should June 18th. Be. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. the drive-in, which will be located just outside the front gates of Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, will start selling tickets online this upcoming Wednesday. So it's going to be a contactless drive-in theater, and guests will be able to bring food or can order concessions like popcorn, candy, and soda from Rooftop Cinema mm. or other on-site food truck partners. So all orders are made online, and guests will be notified for pickup so they can avoid time spending outside their cars. That's according to a press release. Ticket prices will be $25 per vehicle, not per person, regardless of occupancy. The first slate of movies set to run from June 18th to June 28th, with more films coming in July. So that guys, was my question. That would be so what cool. Do you think? So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's so exciting. Yes. However, I am wondering like what movies they will show because yeah. I know the movie industry kind of slowed down pause for right. a little while. So I'm sure they will run some classics. And maybe or maybe they'll kid just, friendly films. So we'll see. Or maybe something will happen soon. Hopefully. So we'll we'll see that. But I, I know, know even you, though but you I can, miss going to the movies. I do too. I was going to say but even though you you can bring your own snacks. I know if we go I know my little girl's still going to want to buy. <laughs> of course she is. That's the way it is. What's yes. your go to movie theater snack? Snack well, popcorn. Okay, fine. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> want to be original. I'm do something controversial. Okay. Okay, because it happens in Texas, but I don't know if it happens elsewhere. Okay. I like the pickles yeah. at the movie theater. I've never um, heard of that. Yes, yeah, see? No? That's not you a didn't thing. Know? I pickles just go cookie dough bites. 
Oh, those okay. are good, too. Those are good, too. <laughs> we'll play hey, the other way with that one. <laughs> right, exactly. Guys, we are talking heat and humidity. Uh, and I want to talk about how humidity really affects our body temperature outside and, and makes heat a little bit more unbearable. So when you have low humidity, uh, sweat actually evaporates uh, easily from your body, and that allows uh, us to cool down. However, when you have high humidity, it prevents the sweat from evaporating quicker, and you're ending up with uh, some times where you just can't cool down as effectively. So some heat exhaustion safety tips. Make sure to never, ever, ever leave kids or pets inside a parked vehicle. It gets even hotter in there. You're going to want to drink a lot of water and stay hydrated. Reduce strenuous activities, especially during the peak heating of the day between about 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Make sure to find shade or stay in the air conditioning. And it's also a good idea to wear lightweight, light colored, colored clothing. And Stephanie and I were kind of laughing. This guy, which came with the the set he kind of looks a, a little bit like the South Park guy <laughs> we couldn't we couldn't help but notice that right now outside we're seeing the first light of the day 75 degrees out there humidity is fairly high as well uh, it's at about 80 percent so again what I was talking about earlier the high humidity is going to be a factor today and how quickly we cool off 75 at the airport but it's 71 in Bolverde 73 in Port SA temperatures are in the 60s up in the hill country 67 in Bandera 66 in Kerrville 66 in Comfort 72 in Divine and 73 in Pleasanton. This is a look at the future cast. Dry as a bone today and sunny. 96 degrees for the high in San Antonio, but out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, Laredo, and Catula flirting with the triple digits today. Low 90s in the hill country and along the coastal plain, even higher humidity for areas like Beeville, Victoria, and Gonzales. So because of that, the heat index is going to be a factor today. It should feel closer to 100 degrees in San Antonio, even hotter where there is higher humidity along the coastal plain. We will already be at 90 degrees by noon. Yeah, it's going to be a hot day. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. 96 for a high, still near 90 by 10 o'clock in the evening. We've got to talk about Tropical Storm Cristobal, which is currently just south of the Louisiana coast. Its winds are gusting up to about 65 miles per hour. It's not expected to strengthen into a hurricane. The biggest issue with Cristobal is going to be rainfall, heavy rainfall from New Orleans all the way out to the panhandle of Florida. As it moves on up to the north, it's going to make landfall sometime later today along the Louisiana coast. We're going to get dry and hot air around that low pressure system. So that means we'll have some of the hottest temperatures we've had all year long, both tomorrow and on Tuesday. We could potentially be in uh, the 100 to 105 degree range in San Antonio by Tuesday afternoon. Similar story for Laredo, Del Rio, and all of us. So we're really going to have to be heat aware over the next few days. It's also going to be dry over the next few days. Notice that there's not real significant chance for rain in the seven day forecast. You know, last week our highs were only in the 80s and this week, like I said, 90s and triple digits. Coming up in the next hour of GMA from 8 to 9, I'm going to have some 100 degree weather trivia. So Ooh, uh -oh, well, we'll be ready. We're bringing the trivia back. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. As always, Steph goes first and always gets it right. With the trivia. 647, always. 75 degrees <laughs> out. And a bear trapped in an SUV and a story of an 88 year old finishing college. We're going to have these stories next on GMSA. Good morning and welcome back. Have you ever had a weird encounter with like a really big animal? N no. <laughs> okay, no bear encounters? No, how scary. I probably wouldn't be standing here. Well, of a video captured in California of a bear trapped inside an SUV, dis destroying that SUV doesn't convince you to lock your doors. Well, clearly nothing will. <sighs> yeah, important lesson. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Come on. Another day, another Placer County bear rescue. Deputies in the Northern California County responded to a bear trapped in a locked SUV. They believe the hungry animal may have smelled food in the vehicle. They broke the window to free the bear, but the damage was already done. It pretty much annihilated the SUV's interior. The Placer County Sheriff's Office is fast becoming known for their bear videos. Video of deputies rescuing a bear from a dumpster in 2019 went viral. And here's another rescue. And yet another. 
As always, the officials warn residents to be bear aware, lock their doors, and not to leave open food out. They say these hungry hulks are always on the lookout for the bear necessities. And now, take a look at one of the newest graduates of St. John's College in New York. How's it look, okay? 88-year-old Pat Branley just finished a journey he started 60 years ago. In 1960, Branley was just two classes shy of an undergraduate degree, but dropped out to pursue a firefighting career. I made the withdrawal physically. I never made the withdrawal in my heart or intellectually. Fast forward to 2020, and Branley finally got to finish what he started and from the comfort of his home. I sat down in a recliner in the living room. I watched the, uh, the virtual graduation on my uh, iPad. Now, while his fellow classmates look to begin their careers, this new grad is heading back to retirement. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Jeremy Roth with the bare facts. <laughs> Definitely. And congratulations to Pat, another proud 2020 graduate. Congratulations. Yes. And another big donation from sports legend, some might say the GOAT, I will say the GOAT, Michael Jordan and his Jordan brand. So the Jordan brand donating $100 million for racial e equity, social justice, and education. The funds will be dispersed across a 10-year period and will supplement an investment from Nike. In a statement, Jordan brand says it represents a family that faces down obstacles and fights against racism. As the need for food assistance continues to grow in San Antonio amid the COVID-19 pandemic, Quesa Community partnering with the San Antonio Food Bank to provide some relief. All month long, you can donate to the Spurs Cafe Spurs Give Together Fund. The initiative helps local restaurants prepare meals for those in need in San Antonio. The food bank says around 200,000 children here in Bear County are at risk for hunger this summer. And to note, donate the Spurs Give Together Fund, just head to the KSET community section of KSET.com. For every dollar donated, seven meals will be given to people in need. Truly an amazing initiative. And like you said, one dollar, seven meals, come on. Yes, it's a, it's a great time to do that. A lot of people kind of uh, forget about that over the summer. So it's a good time to donate. Time now, 654, 75 degrees out. Take a look at some birthdays this weekend. Happy birthday to Summer. Such a cute picture, Summer. Happy birthday, three years old. And we have Josie, 67. Happy birthday, Josie. Go Spurs, go. Yes. There's still a chance to make the playoffs. <laughs> We're going to have to wait go. a little bit longer. <laughs> Remember to keep us in your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We should have them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. I'll take a look at those yes. lower numbers. Yeah, what a great birthday present that would be to win. So, so in Addiscos <laughs> County, $5 million in a scratch off. Oh, that's right. I was like, what was it? Friday? Yeah. Uh, congratulations. Pick three, 109, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 7518, Fireball 8. And your cash five, four, 10, 28, 32, 35, Lotto, Texas, 8, 9, 14, 17, 26, 31. And Powerball 1, 17, 38, 68, 69. Powerball 18, Power Play 2, good luck. Good morning, coming up on GMA, a huge mobilization of protesters across the country and the world. Will it bring change? We're gonna hear from the daughter of Eric Garner who died after being put in a chokehold by a member of the NYPD. Plus, tropical storm Cristobal taking aim at the Gulf Coast. The storm expected to bring flash flooding, storm surge and tornadoes. Rob, right there on the ground in New Orleans. And finally, with the pandemic, the economic crash and racial tensions leading to widespread mental health issues, we're gonna hear about a new push by the son of Robin Williams, the actor who, of course, died after his own struggle with mental illness. It is all coming up on GMA. We hope you'll join us. In the news you need to know before you go, police still looking for a suspect. They say shot a man three times on the city's west side. All this happening around 1130 last night at Enid Street and South Acme Road. Officers saying a man in his 50s was walking home when he was approached by the suspect. They say an altercation ensued. The second man allegedly pulling a gun, shooting the victim three times, once in the shoulder, twice in the abdomen. Police on the scene telling us the victim did manage to get away, run home, and ask for help. He was taken to University Hospital in serious but stable condition. The suspect, believed to be a man in his 30s, was able to run away and at last check is still at large. 
And our series of Leading SA is back every Sunday at 8 a.m. So here shortly, we're going to be bringing you local leaders in a live interview to talk about the issues that matter to you and our community. And today we are set to speak with Mayor Ron Nuremberg in a live interview, but we want you to participate as well. Every Sunday, we are going to let you know who we're speaking to, and we'd love for you to send your questions that you want to ask them. You just have to visit our website at kset.com under the local news tab or on the west side of Cristobal. And so that means we're going to be seeing sunshine and heat today. Right now we're waking up in the 70s, 74 at the airport, 76 in New Braunfels, 60s up in the hill country, 66 in Kerrville and out west at 69 in Hondo. In the day today, we'll already be at 90 by noon, 96 in the afternoon high, uh, about feeling closer to 100 because of the high humidity, and we will likely reach 100 both tomorrow and Tuesday. Going to be a hot week. Good morning. It's a pleasant start to our Sunday, although it is a little muggy out there. It's 74 degrees under mostly sunny skies with high humidity, so feeling like a summer morning, and it's going to feel like a summer day today. We'll be pushing the upper 90s just about everywhere you look, but starting off the day cool up in the hill country where it's in the 60s. Elsewhere, temperatures are in the 70s. If you are planning on taking the dog for a walk today, just know that you're going to want to be careful in the afternoon because temperatures will be climbing. We'll be near 96 degrees in the afternoon heat index of 100 and of course that pavement is pretty tough on the pups paws. So walk them this morning or later on in the day you should be good. We're only going to get hotter from here. In fact, tomorrow we could potentially see our first 100 degree day of the year so far. And then on Tuesday, around 100 to 105 for the high temperatures. Even though we'll quote unquote cool down by the middle of the week, it's still going to be hot with highs in the mid 90s. As far as rain chances go, it doesn't look great for this week. So water those plants if you know that storm. We are on the dry side of that storm. So because of that, it's going to be hot and sunny today. We'll be looking at temperatures climbing 90 by noon, 96 in the afternoon with the heat index close to 100. Northeast winds at 5 to 10. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Protests continue here in San Antonio and around the country. We have an inside look at what unfolded here yesterday and what the plan is going forward. And Mayor Ron Nuremberg will join us live to talk about the protests, the Black Lives Matter movement, and the plan for the San Antonio economy moving forward. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, we have already seen the temperature rise this morning. If it's anything like yesterday, we expect the heat. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Serna. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday morning. It's going to be nice and hot, kind of like it was yesterday. Yesterday, perfect pool day. Yes, it was. We joined in. Well, not not a real pool, but an inflatable pool. But <laughs> still it was still, hey, that's still so fun. Real. We love the kiddie <laughs> pools. All right, so Sarah, are we going to see the same thing today? Uh, we are. We're going to see a very similar forecast today. If anything, it'll be even a little bit hotter in the afternoon by a few degrees. We're waking up right now, though, a bit toasty. It's already almost 80 degrees at the airport right now. 80 in Pleasanton, 81 in New Braunfels, 79 in Del Rio, 74 in Uvalde, and 75 in Hondo. Today's forecast just screams heat. We will be at 90 degrees already by noon and in the afternoon, 96 with high humidity, too. We'll have a heat index near 100 degrees. We'll have northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and even tonight at 10 we're still going to be near 90. Now although it'll feel like 100 degrees we have yet to reach officially 100 degrees at the airport. I do expect that to change though today. So on average when is San Antonio's first 100 degree day? We're going to see a 100 degree day later on this week. When is it on average, though? When do we see our first 100 degree day? May 21st, June 5th, June 24th, or July 4th? I'll be back with your answer, and we'll talk Tropical Storm Cristobal in just a few minutes. Max? Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for the gunman who shot a man three times late last night. Officers say this all happened around 1130 near the intersection of Enid Street and South Acme Road. That's between West Commerce and 151. Police on the scene telling us a man in his early 50s was just walking home. That's when he was approached by the suspect. After an argument, the gunman shot the victim three times, once in the shoulder, twice in the stomach. Police then telling us the victim managed to run away, get home and call for help. He was taken to University Hospital in serious but stable condition. The suspect, believed to be a man in his 30s, remains at large. 
And we continue to follow the latest involving the ongoing protests here in San Antonio after the death of George Floyd. Yesterday, hundreds of people gathered peacefully outside of public safety headquarters on what marked the start of the second week of protesting. The night team's Dylan Collier tells us about the rapidly organizing plan to increase police accountability here in the Alamo City. Before they walked through downtown streets, around 300 demonstrators observed a moment of silence for 8 minutes 46 seconds. The same amount of time a now fired Minneapolis police officer is accused of kneeling on George Floyd's neck. San Antonio city officials announced they lifted a curfew in the central business district just as protest leaders encouraged everyone to not let anything take away from their message. I'm making sure that they on TV right now know that we are not here to create violence. This is what democracy looks like. After the energetic crowd traveled past City Hall and the Justice Center, it regrouped at public safety headquarters. Several speakers talked about the need to defund the San Antonio Police Department, listing specific dates coming up when they can be heard by city leaders, leaders that protesters continue to learn more and more about. You know how to get the names. So when you address them, you already win. That protest wrapped up about 6 p.m. It was followed by another protest, a smaller gathering here at Travis Park that lasted until after 10 p.m. Those budget sessions will take place beginning in August and run through early September. Reporting at Travis Park, Dylan Collier for Good Morning San Antonio. Some business owners along Broadway and Houston are taking extra safety measures to prevent acts of vandalism. Several groups could be seen walking in that area last night. One group calling themselves the Old Ragged First. They say that they are working with the police department. The group says they were one of the first Texas militia groups, but their priority, they say, is to keep people and property safe. That they are visually deterrent first and foremost. The Leading SA is a segment here on KSAT where we speak with leaders of our community. We talk about the issues we see and the issues you, the viewers, see and what our leaders are doing to address them. Today we are joined live by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, y'all. How are you? Good morning. Doing well. Thank you for joining us. So we're just going to get right to it. We did see one day of destruction downtown last Saturday night, but for the most part, everything's remained peaceful in regards to the protests. And as we enter day nine of the protests here in San Antonio, what is your message to those who are taking the streets? Uh, that uh, they have every right to be there, that their message is being heard uh, loud and clear. Uh, those uh, folks that are peacefully assembled, we're proud of you because the, the uh, call for reform is something that uh, people need to hear, and, and we're, we're proud of the way they're doing it. And, Mayor, uh, we're showing some video right now. In an impassioned speech on Thursday, you told members of the protest group to hold you accountable, and we had some viewers asking about your choice of words in that speech. What is your response to them? You know, it, it was um, a, a moment of, of emotion for everyone out there. Um, of course, it got a little passionate uh, myself. There's been an airing of frustrations um, nationwide that you've seen. Um, and certainly that came to city council last Thursday. Uh, but th this is not a moment to, um, uh, to uh, forget you know, that's one of the reasons why there's so much anger out there is that people have been calling for reforms for years and years and years. And it ends up being, um, you know, sucked into the bureaucracy of city governments and, and federal and state governments all across this country. And so we need to hear that frustration, to understand what it is. It's a call uh, for justice. It's a call for reform. And what we need to do is speak directly to it and act upon it. And so speaking about acting upon it, how are you continuing to work with representatives from the demonstrations on the changes that they'd like to see? Well, we're, we're working directly uh, with them to understand um, the, their concerns, which largely have already been reflected in, in, in years past. And, and uh, talking with them about the, the policies that San Antonio police and, and the city of San Antonio have in place. Uh, some of it goes beyond policing. You know, there, there is a call across the country to really examine the way we're budgeting our cities in terms of how we build a safe and healthy community. 
you know, when, when we only leave just a small amount of our budgets nationwide left for things like libraries and parks and safe neighborhoods and programs for kids, child nutrition programs, um, that's not a way to create a healthy community. And, you know, all across this country and this city included, we're leaving just the back pages of our city budgets uh, to things when we get past uh, police and, and, and fire services. And so we've got to reexamine the way we do that. And this whole call for defunding police, that's what it's about. It's about examining how we allocate our resources so we can truly build healthy, safe communities everywhere. Um, and and, and that's, a, that's a message worth hearing in this city hall and city halls across the country. Well, thank you, Ron Nirenberg, for joining us live this morning. We have some more questions for you that viewers have sent us, and we'll be joining in with you in the next half hour. Again, thank you. Great. Good to see you. Thank you. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic, Metro Health's COVID-19 surveillance dashboard showing a big increase for Bear County confirmed COVID-19 numbers. There are now 3,290 confirmed cases, 147 of them being new as of today. No new additional deaths reported, so that number stands at 78. More concerning numbers coming from those hospitalized locally. 205 patients in the ICU this morning, 88 of them on ventilators. So from the 147 new cases, seven are jail inmates. That's a total of 410 cases in terms of the jail. No new cases from jail staff. That number remains at 60. 344 cases are from congregate settings, so that means no new cases in regards to congregate settings reported since yesterday and 135 cases still under investigation. If you or someone you know has marched or participated in those protests, the CDC now recommending getting tested for COVID-19. More specifically, they recommend getting tested within three to seven days of participating. The CDC director also pointed to the use of tear gas by police as something which could actually help spread the virus because it makes it people cough. And another reminder, our local blood bank still in need of donations to prevent a shortage amid this pandemic. In addition to saving lives, the center is providing free antibody testing for all blood donors throughout the summer. The free tests begin on Monday. They last through August 31st. If you want to donate blood or receive the antibody test, you have to make an appointment first. You can visit SouthTexasBlood.org for all that info. We also have a link to get you there right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And HEB shoppers will soon be able to do their shopping at a later time. The store announcing this weekend that its temporary hours across the state are expanding. Most stores will open at 7 a.m. and close at 11 p.m. until further notice. That's according to store officials. The new hours are set to begin tomorrow. You can find a full list of locations and their specific hours right now on our website at ksat.com. And time now, 810, 79 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, a high profile celebrity seen in a crowd of protesters. How Kanye West is what he's doing to help families affected by police brutality. And tracking the latest tropical storm after the break, we're gonna have the details on where it's headed and what people in that area can expect later today. And we're gonna check in with Sarah too. And taking a look outside with a live cam. 79 degrees for now, but potentially record-breaking temperatures this week. We're going to check in with Sarah to try to guess her trivia question. That's coming up. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back. Landfall expected sometime this afternoon in Louisiana for Tropical Storm Cristobal. The National Weather Service's Hurricane Hunters flew into the storm yesterday. At last track, Cristobal had sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. It is expected to continue to strengthen as it continues to track north through the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Now, several models predict that Cristobal is expected to make landfall somewhere at Marsh Island. In the meantime, people in Louisiana have been ordered to evacuate all residents and businesses in the zone adjacent to the levee system. Storm surge is expected to be between four and six feet along the coastal areas. And Sarah's been talking about this for a few days now. Yeah, now the thing with Cristobal is not really concerned too much about it strengthening into a hurricane. The biggest thing is going to be for the, those coastal communities from Louisiana all the way out to the panhandle of Florida. Heavy rains, higher storm surge, and then even yesterday tornadoes were reported all the way out in Orlando from the outer bands of Cristobal. 
We, however, are going to see very dry air from this, and that means we could potentially see our first 100-degree day by tomorrow. So, guys, on average, when is San Antonio's first 100-degree day? All right, ladies first. Thank you. All right, Steph. Well, I'm sure we see them in May and June, but I'm going to guess June 24th. You're going to uh, guess June okay. 24th, Max? I'm you can go... guess the same answer. No, you can't. There can be no <laughs> ties on GMSA weekends. There, you can. I'm going June 5th. You're going to go June 5th? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, actually, it's June 24th. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But again, you could have guessed. No, 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 no. Stephanie's <laughs> record is now 26 and 2 no. when it comes to weather 101 questions. You could have guessed that one as well. <laughs> right, June 24th, that's over the last 30 years when, on average, we've seen our first 100 degree day. And I do think if we don't get there tomorrow, which we're forecast to get there tomorrow, we'll definitely get there on Tuesday. So we have got a lot to cover in the forecast. 79 degrees outside with mostly sunny skies, but humidity is high. High humidity is going to factor into the heat as well over the next few days. Whenever heat uh, humidity rather is high, our body doesn't sweat easily and that doesn't evaporate as easily. And so that's why we have some issues with uh, heat related illness. 79 right now in San Antonio. We are already up from our morning low of 74. It's nearly 80 degrees just about everywhere you look, except for in the hill country where it's near 70. Now in the future cast, Blue skies, sunny skies for us today, but that'll allow the thermometer to rise. Yesterday, we were close to about 93 for the high. It's never a good idea when my weather dress matches the weather maps because that means heat. And today, this afternoon, we'll be seeing temperatures climbing into the upper 90s generally for the high temperatures. But again, as the I said earlier, the high humidity will make it feel closer to 100 degrees. Northeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. I mean, we'll already be at 90 by the lunch hour, so it's going to be a hot one. Our weather pattern is very interesting. We have got a battling atmosphere right now. What do I mean by that? We've got a ridge of high pressure keeping things dry for us here in San Antonio, but Tropical Storm Cristobal is going to try to make a run for that ridge and split things up. Uh, here, though, we're going to stay dry, but you can see just how far these rain bands extend from Louisiana and New Orleans all the way out to uh, areas in southern Georgia. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of rain for folks along the Gulf Coast. We're just on the dry side of that system. Currently, Tropical Storm Cristobal has wind gusts of up to 65 miles per hour, and it's moving north at about 12 miles per hour. So it is expected to make landfall along uh, that southeastern Louisiana coast just over the next few hours or so into the afternoon. Again, bringing a lot of rain for the Gulf Coast regions east of Louisiana, but for us it is going to be dry, it is going to be hot, and the thermometer is going to rise. I'm forecasting 100 tomorrow, but on Tuesday we'll likely be in the 100 to 105 degree range. Both of these days, record challenging heat. The record on Monday, 101. The record on Tuesday, 104. We have very little chance for rain over the next seven days. Max, Stephanie? Very different from last week. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 819, 79 degrees out. And a popular rapper seen marching with protesters in Chicago. Coming up next, why he was in the crowd and how he's helping the cause. All right, let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, one, zero, nine, Fireball two, Daily four, seven, five, one, eight, Fireball eight. Cash five, four, 10, 28, 32, 35, Lotto Texas, eight, nine, 14, 17, 26, 31. And your Powerball numbers, 1, 17, 38, 68, 69, Powerball 18, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. In your spotlight news this morning, Kanye West seen marching with a group of protesters in his hometown of Chicago. Hundreds of students and their allies marched on the north side and then the south side, demanding more than just justice for George Floyd. Marchers claim Chicago public schools would rather put $33 million into keeping police in schools than to put resources in for their schools. Now, in addition to his appearance, Kanye West also making a $2 million donation to support the families of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor. 
Superstar rapper Snoop Dogg says he plans to vote for the first time in 2020 to cast out President Donald Trump. The 48-year-old says he was under the mistaken impression that he could not vote because of his past felonies. But his criminal record has been expunged and he says he wants to set an example by voting in the upcoming fall election on a radio show this week. Snoop Dogg said, quote, I can't stand to see this pumpkin office, unquote. He said even though he's not out in the streets protesting, he's still using his platform and his music to spread his message. To a little throwback Sunday now, June 7th marks National VCR Day. <laughs> That's right, the ultimate technology of the 70s that made its way into our homes and kept us entertained for hours and hours, all the way to the 90s. While it was developed first, VCR, in 1953, it was not introduced to the world in 19, until 1956 and mass produced until the 70s. Now, back then, they used to cost hundreds of dollars, but now can be found on display at museums. What? <laughs> and maybe your parents' attic? Oh, my goodness. Shout out to Blockbusters and shout out to the Nickelodeon VCR tapes because they were always orange. I, oh, <laughs> yeah, matchy-matchy. <laughs> and maybe this will give you something to do later today. Get your spoons or your cones ready. It is National Chocolate Ice Cream Day, so everyone has their own favorite flavor. But June 7th, it is all about chocolate. Guys, favorite ice cream flavor? Chocolate. I like, I like Cherry Garcia. Ooh, oh, yeah. okay. That's a, that's a good combo. It has chocolate in it. So. Love it. You can't go wrong with chocolate. You can't go. And you know what? Sarah's telling us it's going to be hot out there today. Perfect day to celebrate. Get some ice cream. Yes, I'm sure my daughter will oblige. <laughs> like, now, you need it. 825, 79 degrees out. And coming up, Mayor Ron Nirenberg will join us live again after the break to talk about how our local economy has been affected by the coronavirus pandemic. But first, we are talking birthdays. Happy birthday, Layla, nine years old. Happy birthday, Layla. Thank you, Peg. Happy birthday. And happy birthday, 103 years young to Jesusa. I love the Fiesta crown. Happy <laughs> birthday. Keep posting your birthday pictures to KSET.com. KSET.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Good morning and welcome back. I'm Max Massey. I'm Stephanie Cerna. Thanks for joining us. It is Sunday. Happy Sunday, but happy warm Sunday. Yeah, and it's also National Chocolate Ice Cream yeah. Day. We just talked about that, so I thought we could kick off the forecast with an ice cream melt forecast, how quickly things will melt for us. It is National Chocolate Ice Cream Day. We've already been talking about it. And if you do get ice cream and want to eat it outside, make sure to eat it fast because it'll be a puddle in seconds if you don't, just because the high temperature expected to be near the upper 90s today with high humidity. Right now outside, it is 80 degrees almost at the San Antonio National Airport. High humidity already at 72%. And we're at 81 in New Braunfels, 80 in Gonzales. It's 79 in Del Rio, 77 in Rock Springs, and 72 in Kerrville, so a little cooler up in the hill country. But today, if you want to get out to the pool, just know that you're really going to need to layer on that sunscreen because UV index is extreme today. Skin damage time within less than 10 minutes if you don't take those proper precautions. And this is going to be what the afternoon will look like. We'll already be at 90 degrees by noon, climbing into the upper 90s by the afternoon. And again, a high heat index value today. Now coming up, I'll have heat safety tips. We'll also talk about potentially the warmest temperatures we've seen all year, just right around the corner. Max. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, we now know Bear County has 147 new confirmed cases of COVID-19. Mayor Ron Nuremberg tweeting the numbers out late last night. And Mayor Ron Nuremberg joining us live now. You joined us live in the last half hour. Thanks for coming on our show again. It's great to be with you all. All right. Before we get to the $191 million plan for the economic recovery, we have to talk about the virus itself in press conference this week. You had to keep reminding people we are still in the midst of this pandemic. You know, what is your message to people out there who priorities might have shifted in the last month or so? And are we seeing another rise of confirmed cases here? Uh, so, number one, uh, I appreciate your, your call to action because, yes, we do need to remind people that there is still a pandemic. There is a virus out there. It's still spreading in our community and people need to not let their guard down. Uh, what we're doing and what we're, we're trying to advise people is continue to go by the health guidance. 
Um, primarily as we begin to open, see more activities opened up and businesses opened up, uh, protect yourselves by, you know, wearing a, wearing a mask when you're within six feet of someone not in your household. That also protects other people from you if you may be carrying the virus. Stay six feet away, you know, your physical distancing, of course, proper sanit sanitizing of hard services, and, of course, the, the number one defense, which is washing your hands uh, with soap and water. And going to the council meeting on uh, Thursday, City Council passing the $191 million recovery and resiliency plan. Can you tell us how important that is? It's critically important. You know, the, the slowing of this virus has also seen slowing of economic activity, and, and that's been necessary because we, we know uh, thousands more uh, in our own community will have died if the, if the virus spread unabated. Uh, but that does require us to focus in on the essentials. And so the city council um, approved a uh, relief and recovery plan. And, and, and building from that, what we're focusing on is, number one, making sure that we can continue to open our economy in a safe way. So all the health protocols and testing and tracing uh, activities are funded. Uh, we also, you know, get down to the roots of what makes uh, a healthy and community Number one, we can't allow anyone to go hungry. So food security is part of that, along with housing security. Um, one of the elements of the funding program is to make sure that no one loses their home. So there's a lot of rental assistance and other housing opportunity within the fund. Uh, we put a, a significant amount into workforce development, understanding we need to get people back to work. And also some of those jobs may not be there right now. Uh, so we need to get people into skills a skills training pipeline if their jobs aren't there yet or never come back at all. Uh, the third one, bridging the digital divide. Uh, of course, we see how dependent everyone is on the internet now, even before the pandemic, but certainly during this pandemic, we wanna um, close the digital divide in communities that don't have access. And then finally, small business support. The vast majority of jobs here in San Antonio are created, are, are um, fueled by small businesses, locally owned businesses here. And so there's a huge portion of relief coming for small businesses. Just so our viewers can understand the magnitude of how we've been affected by this pandemic, in your own words, can you explain how bad our local economy has been hit? You know, it's not unlike any other economy across the country or really across the world. Uh, we've had uh, a, a, um, a, a collapse of our tourism and hospitality industry, uh, primarily because it relies on visitor traffic. And that is going to take some time to recover. And we don't know if it's going to recover in the next few years because people are going to, you know, be slow to get back to the normal levels of traveling. It will come back uh, to what extent and how soon uh, remains to be seen. But, you know, across the board, sectors have ha had to slow down because supply chains have slowed. International activity has slowed. Uh, but we're starting to see some recovery. And that's good news. We want to make sure we do it in a healthful way so we don't have to go backwards. Um, you had asked, you know, what do these new numbers mean? And there has been a jump. But, but keep in mind, um, the testing results that you're seeing in the new cases every day are simply the tests that are being reported to San Antonio's Metropolitan Health District. Those ebb and flow because there's, there's sometimes a delay at the labs. You know, some come back in 24 hours, some in two or three days, some have come back in 10 days depending on the private labs that are being used. The key thing to watch, and we have our progress indicators on covid19.sanantonio.gov, the key things to watch are our hospital data, making sure that um, we don't start to see a severe rise in the severity of cases and that we have enough medical capacity to treat people who are ill, as well as our positivity rate, which has, started, which, which has slowly declined um, and it's remaining relatively stable over the last couple of weeks. And then finally, um, the how fast the cases are doubling. And, and that's going by the onset of illness reported to Metro Health. And, and we're on the downslope right now as well. We want to keep an eye on that because it's flattened a little bit. Uh, we want to make sure it doesn't uh, start rising um, from where we were. All right, Definitely man. still take precautions. Thank you. Absolutely. Last question. Uh, this past week, numbers released that 2.5 million jobs around the country uh, have come back in the month of May. Is San Antonio seeing a similar bounce back in regards to jobs? We're seeing some. And here's the cautionary tale. Uh, we can't go back to the way things were. If not, we're going to see the same kind of economic hardship that we saw before the pandemic. The jarring thing for everyone to realize 
is that when the food bank lines doubled to 120,000 people a week, it meant that prior to the pandemic, um, we Mayor, do we lose your connection? Oh no! Okay. Can you hear me? Oh, now we can now hear we you. Gotcha. Now we can hear you. Sorry, you, you cut out down? for a little bit. Yes, yeah, sorry. Do you want to finish my my yeah. answer? Yes, yes please. please. Um, so the the key thing to for people to keep in mind is that prior to the pandemic, we had sixty thousand people on the food bank line. Um, unemployment numbers are deceiving because we have such a high level of underemployment in our communities, especially here in San Antonio. We want to make sure that we have people on track to to have jobs that allow them to make ends meet and, and allow their families not to go hungry. That's the that's the vision that we have moving forward from this pandemic. We can be a stronger, more resilient, more equitable community if we build it the right way. Well, Mayor Ron Nierenberg, thank you for joining us. We know you've been giving us updates daily and then, you know, answering the news media and answering uh, our viewers and then I'm sure your own department as well. So thank you for keeping us updated. Thank you. Have and new overnight, a white Virginia police officer charged with using his stun gun on a black man and the man actually saying he couldn't breathe. All this while well, it was another night of largely peaceful protesting across the country and around the world against police brutality, including what was expected to be the largest protest yet in Washington, D.C. ABC's Rachel Scott has the details. Breaking overnight, a Virginia police officer arrested and charged with assault after this violent takedown of a black man caught on police body camera. The white officer seen firing his stun gun as the man walked away. The officer seen leaning on the man's back with his knees. The man saying, I can't breathe. We can all agree that the footage of this incident is unsettling. I want our community to know that we are pursuing charges that are in line with current law. It comes as the nation is still grappling with outrage over other violent videos like this one. Two Buffalo police officers now charged with felony assault after shoving this 75 year old man to the ground. Incidents like that driving huge crowds like this one overnight in Seattle. Police firing flashbangs to disperse a crowd after they say protesters began throwing explosives, rocks and bottles at them, injuring some officers. And in Denver, thousands marching through the streets, many gathering outside police headquarters held back by fences. Earlier Saturday in Minneapolis, the city where George Floyd died while being arrested, the city's mayor booed forcing him to leave a demonstration after refusing a protester's demand to abolish the city's police department. But at the same time Saturday, some of the largest demonstrations yet coast to coast, mostly peaceful marches from San Francisco to New York, New Orleans to Philadelphia. Here in Washington, the largest crowd yet. A sea of protesters in the shadow of the nation's capital pressing toward the White House. So we actually make policy change and make sure that everybody's treated equally in this country. Overnight, protesters painting defund the police on the street as a counterpart to Mayor Bowser's Black Lives Matter memorial. Demands for equality even sweeping across small towns. In Saddlebrook, New Jersey, where more than 80% of the residents are white, chants of Black Lives Matter. And again, that was Rachel Scott reporting. Time now, 841, 79 degrees out. And a shout out to all our 2020 graduates this year. After the break, we're going to introduce you to Eduardo Ramos. He's the valedictorian at Fox Tech High School. We're going to tell you how busy he was his senior year. And before we head to break, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. 79 degrees now, but it is going to be hot, hot, hot today. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning and welcome back. We all know it has been a unique school year, especially for graduating seniors across the country. All of this after schools closed down back in March. And here at KSET, we are shining a spotlight on our 2020 seniors through our great graduate series. In this piece, we're going to introduce you to Eduardo Ramos. He's the valedictorian at Fox Tech High School, and he tells us he's looking forward to a career in neuroscience. 
I plan to attend a medical school outside of Texas. Eduardo Ramos is already talking about medical school, but for now, he's heading to the University of Texas at Austin to study neuroscience. He says he's always been passionate about robotics and the medical field, but when he took biology at Fox Tech, he says that's when he decided he wanted to be a neurosurgeon. I took the class and I, I loved it. And one of the parts I loved the most was the nervous system. They, they teach us how it worked and it was, it was honestly pretty cool. Eduardo is a valedictorian of his graduating class. He was in the academic decathlon, NHS, Posa, the mariachi class, and he's been busy with sports. I've been in cross country, I've been in track, I've been in archery, I've been in soccer. Doing all those activities really made my high school experience fun. Eduardo also had the opportunity to be on the soccer team with his younger brother, Eric Ramos. I had time to bond with a lot of underclassmen and I got to play with my brother in the team, so it was pretty cool. I am definitely proud of him even though he's going to UT. Jose Castro coaches cross country and track. He says Eduardo is definitely competitive on and off the field. So he's probably one of the best students that I've had. Very competitive. He constantly aims for not only perfection, but like giving 110% at everything that he does. Of course, we wish Eduardo the best of luck. Now, before the break, I talked about heat and humidity and the difference between a dry heat and when there's humidity outside. Uh, to my to your left is somebody who's experiencing a dry heat and to your right is somebody who's experiencing heat with high humidity. Now, whenever we have heat with high humidity, what ends up happening is our bodies just cannot evaporate the sweat. And so that's why we have issues when it comes to heat related illnesses. And that's because your body can't cool itself down that easily. And we're gonna have long stretches where we're going to have high heat and high humidity over the next few days. So keep that in mind. It's 80 degrees right now in San Antonio, or just about 80 degrees in San Antonio. 78 in Bulverde, 78 in Port S.A., 80 in Divine, 72 in Bandera, 73 in Kerrville, 81 in New Braunfels, and 77 in Floresville. Now for the day today, we're going to have abundant sunshine, a lot like yesterday, but just a smidge warmer. We are going to be having temperatures in the upper 90s, likely around San Antonio, but with that high heat index value, it'll feel even warmer. Out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, uh, feeling closer to about 101, and then here in San Antonio with that high humidity, feeling closer to 100. So for today's forecast, 85 by 10, 90 already by noon, mostly sunny skies, heat index near 100, even the thermometer should read around 96. Six. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and we're going to be having temperatures cooling down, but not by too much. It'll still be near 90 degrees by 10. Of course, we've all been talking about Tropical Storm Cristobal, which will be making landfall along the Louisiana coast probably by this afternoon. Currently, it's moving to the north at about 12 miles per hour with wind gusts of 65 miles per hour, but the winds are not the major concern here. Of course, you've got areas below sea level out toward New Orleans and so heavy rains and storm surge are a big concern all the way out to the panhandle of Florida. In fact, yesterday in Orlando, they even had tornadoes from the outer bands of that storm. We in San Antonio are going to be on the dry side of that storm. And so that's why temperatures are going to be allowed to warm up quite a bit over the next few days. In fact, we have yet to hit 100 degrees at the airport, but I think we'll do it if not tomorrow, definitely by Tuesday. This is a look at some of the potential high temperatures on Tuesday. We could be uh, in the 100 to 105 degree range in San Antonio, just simply from that dry air and the high heat from being on the west side of Tropical Storm Cristobal. Uh, in fact, we could challenge records too. 100 for the high tomorrow, but the record is 101, and 103 on Tuesday, but the record is 104. Unfortunately, we're not going to see much of a chance for rain over the next few days. You guys want to hear something funny? A very weak cool front will move through on Tuesday evening. That'll drop our highs from the hundreds into the upper 90s. So that's pretty cool, isn't it, guys? Yeah, <laughs> we're looking forward to 97. What a nice break. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 8.50, 79 degrees out. And here's what you can expect tomorrow on GMSA at 6 o'clock.
She can paint, she can draw, she even knows how to do block printing. Her name is Rachel Kamada. She's a great graduate from NEISD's International School of the Americas, and she's making her mark in the world of art. I have this artist's full story tomorrow on GMSA at 9. Here's the news you need to know before you go this morning. San Antonio police searching for a gunman who they believe shot another man three times on the city's west side. All of this happening around 1130 last night. This is the intersection of Enid Street and South Acme Road. That's between West Commerce and 151. Officers say a man in his early 50s was walking home. That's when he was approached by the suspect. The victim managed to get away after he was shot three times. He ran home, called 911. He remains in serious but stable condition. The suspect still on the loose, believed to be a man in his 30s. Good news in the pollen count today. We are not seeing anything that would cause any major issues. Mold, grass, and pigweed are low. So hope you can be like this cute Aww. baby today and find a pool or a cute little uh, unicorn inflatable, inflatable to float in. That is cute. It's going to be a hot one. We're already at 83 degrees right now, but we're warming up. That's already up about 10 degrees from the start of the day. We'll be near 90 by noon, 96 in the afternoon. High heat index too, close to 100. That's what it'll feel like. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Then we're really cranking up the heat. Tomorrow could potentially be our first triple digit day officially of the year. And then Ooh. by Tuesday, Temperatures range probably between about 100 to 105 just about everywhere you look. Even hotter potentially out toward Del Rio where, as you know, it sometimes feels like a desert out there. One thing I will caution you is that the humidity is going to be high too tomorrow. So high heat, high humidity. Check on those who don't have air conditioning and make sure you find right. cool places. A double whammy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Steph. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday. All right. Happy Sunday.